Tikka too. I don't know if you've uh, if you're uh, familiar with them or not, but the Tikka Batu or the Tikka T3 Light Batu is um, an excellent little rifle. This one here that I have is a 20 inch barrel and is chambered in 300 Winchester short mag. And I have removed the uh, the rear sight as you can see here because I want to be able to run a larger objective um, for this particular rifle. So it's, it's easy to put back on if I want to later. I'm running a uh, 3 to 9 by 40 uh, Canadian Leupold VX2 with uh, an adjustable turret for, for vertical because I, I am establishing zeros at different ranges. And today we're running a bunch of loads through it, uh, a bunch of test loads, see what kind of formulation works best in this rifle. I will be trying uh, a few different combinations. I'm running a 180 grain ballistic tip Barnes um, TTSX. And those are running at about uh, 2750 feet per second. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll also be running um, some 165 grain privy uh, bullets uh, using Varget. I'll be running uh, 55 and a half to 57 and a half and watching for pressure signs and uh, where, where do they want to group. Uh, I expect to be in a 3000 plus feet per second range for those bullets. 165 grain uh, privy partisan bullets. I'm not too sure um, if these bullets are going to hold uh, together well enough for hunting purposes, but we're just going to see what kind of formulation works for this weight of bullet. And I've also got some um, 200 grain uh, nozzler uh, ballistic tips, and uh, should be interesting. I'm running IMR 4350 with these, uh, 61 to 63 grains. So. Um, I'm not going to let you sit there and watch me shoot this thing, I mean, uh, how boring is that? There may be one or two shots, but otherwise we'll just look at the target and see see if this thing can shoot. Um, should be able to do okay with the scope on it. Um, should be able to get some reasonable ideas of what kind of accuracy this thing will get. So here we go. Safety first. And we'll start with the Privy Partisan. One, two, three. I very much like the detachable box magazines in these rifles. They are a polymer magazine. And for the 300 short mag, it's a capacity of um, three rounds. And honestly, if you're hunting, if you need more than three rounds, you're doing something wrong. Okay, here we go. Fifty-five and a half grains of Varget, no problem. Primer is not showing any signs of pressure. No cratering of the primer strike. Good. And that round was... Two thousand six hundred and twenty-five, so pretty soft, pretty slow. However, the uh, lead bullet is taking a little bit of a pounding inside the uh, magazine. Twenty six sixty.
hoping for a bit more velocity than that. We'll let the barrel cool and we'll try some more loads. Uh, I think we're running yeah, half a grain up, half, half a grain increments. So uh, we'll uh, let this thing cool down and uh, we'll get back. Okay folks, so here's the results of the, um, the Preview Partisan 165 grain bullets coming out of the Tika T3 Batu. And I mean, from what we see here, we're not talking very, very, um, very impressive. We're in the neighborhood of around um, 26, 25 feet per second, and the um, uh, the standard deviation is is actually quite large in all of these. Here's the um, here's the um, another Varget load at uh, um, 56 grains, you know, just. Uh, around 2682 feet per second. There's another one here at um, the 56 and a half grains. So, we're, you know, we're still in the high 2600s. Um, number four here is uh, 57 grains, around 2700 feet per second. And number five is um, 57 and a half grains at, again, the low 2700s. So not terribly impressive so far as the uh, as groups are concerned, um, but you know again I have a I have a lot of concerns with the Privy Partisan bullets, at least these ones. I have not had a single um, 308 caliber rifle, 30 odd six, 308, 300 Winchester short mag, where these bullets have shot well. This is the Privy Partisan 200, uh, 165 grains. Okay, we're back with the uh, 300 short mag take up at two. Now I'm going to be running some uh, some hot 200 grain Nosler Acubons out of this. Uh, three rounds, and I am not looking forward to this. There we go. Why do I do this to myself? Not that hot. Still very unpleasant to shoot. This is the uh, this is the 200 grain Nosler Acubond out of the 300 um, short mag, and um, here uh, this group number one is at um, uh, an average of around 2590 or 2499, 2500 feet per second plus or minus 12 feet per second. So I mean these um, these are better bullets, and as you can see, um, generally they they seem to be shooting a bit better. Here we see uh, 61 and a half grains of IMR 4350. I love that powder. And we're running at uh, 2568. Here we're running, there's actually three holes in this patch right here. 25, uh, 2566 feet per second. Now this one was probably me. Group number four is um, uh, just under 2600 feet per second. And um, group number five is uh, just over 2,600 feet per second. So, and the um, the standard deviation on these groups is really low for pretty much all of them. I mean, look at this one here. Plus or minus five feet per second. That's pretty reasonable, right? This one here is uh, plus or minus four feet per second. 
So the chronograph seems to be uh, saying that generally these um, these groups are pretty pretty acceptable. Um, I mean, really, what's the difference between uh, 40 feet per second when it comes to a bullet? Well, probably. I mean, if you're going to be running in between uh, two and 300 meters with a 200 grain bullet, it probably means a bit. But uh, uh, overall, pretty pleased with the nozzle occupants. More testing to do. Here's another target for the Tika T3 bit 2. This here group, this was fired at 200 meters with a fixed four power scope, and um, um, this is pretty pretty reasonable. And this is going back to uh, June, halfway through June. Um, this was shot 200 meters on bags with a 180 grain TA6 uh, ballistic tips by um, Barnes. Again, a, f a fixed four power M8 Leupold scope. There was sunny, there was no wind. Uh, some very faint flattering with the primers and uh, pretty good. Pretty good shooting overall. Just a quick uh, thing to add. Serious velocity loss with that 20 inch barrel. Serious velocity losses. So the handiness of the rifle being a small carbine, lightweight, high recoil, but serious velocity losses. And um, I think probably in the neighborhood of around 200 feet per second. Uh, maybe even more uh, compared to say a 24 inch barrel. That extra four inches, you make up a lot of velocity in that four inches for you know powder burn. Um, you make them, you maximize your powder burn. I pretty much knew all that already because of my th experiences with the 308. But a 22 inch barrel is optimal for a 308, and I'm running a 300 Winchester short mag with a 20 inch barrel. Okay, so um, big compromises. But uh, I think in the end, for the kind of um, uh, impact or delivery of energy that I want to make at the velocity or the uh, sorry the distances that I'm thinking about, that's okay. Um, so I'm not too cons concerned about making extreme long hunting shots because, well, I sort of have a bit of an ethical hunting situation when I when I know that you know certain ranges aren't going to work out for me very well. So. Um, so if you're looking at a rifle like this, take in mind that you are going to have velocity shortcomings as a result of having such a short barrel. Really fairly accurate rifle, but you are losing in that neck of the woods. Okay, so the Tika T3 Bet 2 is, well, I have mixed feelings on it. Overall, I very much like this rifle. Um, as you have seen previously, um, it can shoot. There's a lot of flame coming out the barrel of this thing, though. Um, and uh, this is look at, looking at this front sight here. The guard protectors on these things are garbage. Yeah, complete total garbage. If I could find a uh, maybe a Key 98 front sight protector, I'm going to put that on. Just just some general impressions for you. Um, Trigger is about uh, four and a half pounds. A little bit of creep, but overall fairly, um, fairly crisp. The magazine mechanism, the polymer magazine, is really good. I like it. Extremely smooth cycling. I got to tell you, um, I'm new to the Tika T3, but I'm very impressed with the cycling of these rifles. So smooth. Um, probably even smoother than a Remington Model 700 very very impressed um, the this model here is the Tika Batu T3 and um, it comes with a, a very long ramped sight which which resides in this area which prohibits you from pretty much running any scope that has uh, a bell objective on it basically you'd have to have a scope without a, an objective on it something something like this if you wanted to run with open sights it's uh, kind of an interesting combination if you had quick detach rings, remove your scope, and then you're running on, uh, on open sight. Say if you've hunted an animal, dropped it, and now you want to dress it. If you're in grizzly bear country, take the scope off on open sights. Makes, makes a lot of sense. Um, I do like the, uh, the fact that the open sights are, um, are uh, high glow sights. Um, yellow in the rear, red front bead. Um, they grab the eyes very, very quickly. 
I don't quite understand what they're thinking when they built these, these, these long ramped um, sites. That doesn't make much sense to me. It just it honestly doesn't. But yeah, they are plastic as well, uh, which I don't like. Um, this front sight protector has had one small impact and it's pretty much done. Not really made to last in my opinion. Now a bunch of you out there that are Tika T3 fanatics are going to disagree with me. I'm just giving you the way I see, uh, talking the way I see it. Um, other things that I, I like about the stock is, um, sorry, the rifle is the stock. <coughs> um, most polymer injected um, stocks have quite a bit of flex to them. This one is actually pretty good. It's quite rugged actually. The um, the uh, the grip panels that they have on here are not grippy at all, but it's better than nothing. Um, I very much like the uh, the cocking indicator. In the bolt right here is a caulking indicator I've actually used that a few times now it's, it's a nice little feature to have um, I'm not going to go in great detail because there's a lot of Tika, Tika T3 um, um, videos out there uh, but not Tika Pet 2 videos one thing that I will criticize uh, Tika on is the fact that um, you have to buy Tika or Optilock mounts and rings for these rifles. Now, I managed to find some some weaver mounts that um, I can bolt on top of the receiver that are affordable. The Tika and the Opti the Tika Optilock mounts and rings are horrendously expensive. So I'm I'm, in, I'm into this for about 15 bucks for some weaver um, mounts. However, it does raise the profile up quite a bit, and so you can you're pretty much ded dedicating yourself to, to low mounted um, rings because you're actually adding another layer of, of mount on top of the receiver. Um, another uh, point of um, um, something I'm not terribly happy with is, is the recoil pad. It's basically a hockey puck. If any of you out there have been shooting uh, jungle carbines, you'll know what I mean by a hockey puck. There's no, there's no give to that at all. Pretty much all it does is, if you're going to lean your rifle up against the wall, stop your rifle from sliding out underneath because it's a bit grippy. Um, so you're not getting any points for the, for the recoil pad. It's not a recoil pad. Um, overall, I'm very, very happy. This is going to be my hunting rig for this year. It is extremely light, extremely lightweight, um, which is a, both a, uh, a blessing and a... Uh, not a blessing because the uh, bunch of hand loads that are running through it today running a 200 grain nozzle Iraqi bond and I pumped it up to about 2700 feet per second and uh, it was very unpleasant to shoot but that is the compromise between uh, having a, a short carbine and um, and uh, and a heavy bullet there's just there's no way to get around it is there? I mean, I, I'm not into muzzle brakes. I'm not into magna porting. I don't like any of that kind of stuff. I think it's ridiculous for a hunting rifle. Um, I'm sure many of you out there will disagree. However, that's how I rock and roll. The Tika T3 Bad 2. Um, good rifle. But there are some things they could do better. As with all rifles. Thanks, folks. Rifle Chair signing off. Hope you enjoyed the video.